I am so pumped for this review today. It's another rose tone eyeshadow, and usually I am quite underwhelmed by such a situation, but this time it's special. I'm excited. I'm going to be reviewing the new Patrick Ta Major Dimensions 2 Rose eyeshadow palette. <laughs> My box? I don't... I don't know what's going on here. Um, I think an eyeshadow might have exploded. Oh no, I haven't opened this yet. Hold on. Oh no. We're gonna have a goner. There's gonna be a goner. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on. And... Hold that for me. Hold on. I'm gonna press it back in. I'm still gonna do the review. But I'm gonna contact Sephora and be like, Yo, you send me a broken one! Send me a new one! It's not doing a good job being pushed back in though. So I'm gonna have to be careful. Wow, what a damper on the review! And I have eyeshadow on my new shirt! Dang it! I don't know what's up with that box too and why it came broken. I'm gonna still review it. It still is beautiful by the way. This event took over what was supposed to be a happy moment. <laughs> but yeah, Sephora just throws the stuff in a big well of a box with one piece of construction paper and they call it a day. I'm like, my stuff comes broken from them. Let's actually get seriously back into the review. So mine came broken, just one of the shadows, but uh, other than that, it's a gorgeous rose palette. And it's okay, in my opinion, for Patrick Ta to come out with a rose tone palette because that is his vibe, his aesthetic as an artist. And he has to come out with a rose palette yet. Anyways, so yes, this is Patrick Ta's second eyeshadow palette. I ordered it on the Sephora website. Great, it came out during the VIB sale while I could get 20% off. You wanna know the catch? I think I forgot to use Save Spring at checkout, so I think I paid full price for it, so <laughs> that's great. This is not a cheap eyeshadow palette. It is $68. So that's why I'm reviewing it for you today. I do have the original Major Dimension shadow to show you as well. I do enjoy that palette a lot. It says right now it's an online only exclusive. You can also get it on the Patrick Ta website. So this is supposed to be like a daily wardrobe of rose tone neutral shades. We have a mix of warm, cool, and neutral matte, satin, and pearlescent shades with two cream bases that create the perfect rich canvas for your shadows. I do enjoy the cream base. They can crease. I have a pretty dry eyelid. It takes a bad product for eyeshadow not to wear well on my eyelids. I think the creams do wear well, but if you have oily eyelids, I would beware. I would set with powder, use a good base underneath those creams. I think this is a highly anticipated palette. At least it was for me. So this is the box that it's going to come in. It's like ripped up and a mess for me right now. I'm turning the lights really down so that you can truly see everything because everything in this palette is really reflective. And then here is the palette. <sighs> Mine's already dirty, obviously from the cleaning it with a makeup wipe, <laughs> trying to anyways, but it's a bit different than the original palette's packaging. I think this looks much more expensive if you ask me, just those little details that they added. And then the back of the palette, palette by the way, 12 months shelf life, made in the USA, and this is the bag. So the packaging is really, really pretty, but as soon as you touch it, you're gonna get fingerprints all over it and she's gonna look messy. So this is what the palette is going to look like. She is stunning, right? So you have a big mirror. These are the two cream shadows. Love that they get so well protected and will last longer with this plastic cover. And then here are the powder shades. I love the way that this is laid out. It really is so intuitive. The mattes down here, the shimmers up here. They have a corresponding matte. It just makes sense. Light to dark, really truly done through an artist's eye. In my opinion, if I were to create a makeup brand, which I don't think I ever will, <laughs> I would love to design my palettes like this, just in a way that makes sense, you know? So let's get to swatching. We're gonna start off with the two creams. I'm gonna be careful about swatching these. Normally I like to get close and kind of show you digging my finger in, but we have special circumstances with this one today. So we're gonna start off with the light and they feel really really creamy almost a touch oily so be careful with that they definitely melt really fast to the touch of the finger do the lighter one but you can see they carry some pigment and they do set down how pretty are these we have like a nice rosy tone and then a deep shade for like a smoky eye. So I'm gonna swatch the mattes from lightest to deepest just so that I don't have to keep holding it up but the mattes feel very buttery 
Starting with the lightest matte, that's going to be your bone shade with a rosy tone, mid-tone kind of rosewood. We're going deeper here, and then this almost becomes like a burgundy, I would say. And then here's the deepest that it will go. Definitely has a little bit more brown in it. I like that it's deeper than the cream. So these are the mattes. Again, don't go buy swatches completely. I'm a bad swatcher to begin with, but uh, shimmers are the fun part. And again, I'm going from lightest to deepest when it comes to the shimmers. So they are gonna be soft, hence why that first one broke. So this is the broken one. Very beautiful and dimensional. I love how his shades have texture to them. So they're gonna give you more oomph on the lid. This is pretty, this is like golden pink shift. Hopefully you can see that. And this is a reddish cranberry shade with very strong gold shimmers. Oh, these are stunning. And then the last shade that we have is the deepest shimmer. This one is the least textured. As you can see, these four up here are really glittery and textured. This has more of a smooth satin appearance to it. It's more of a shimmer. Compared to these guys, it looks more satin, doesn't it? So this is the palette right here. It definitely stays within that rosy theme, but I think it's done beautifully. The shimmers look gorgeous. I'm excited to get this in my eyes. So here are the swatches. So before I start putting some shimmers on my eyeballs, I wanted to show you how the original Major Dimensions and the Rose palette kind of differ here. The top is the rose, the bottom one is the first one. You can definitely see more warmth in the bottom, one they're close you know they definitely look not like the same palette but if these were all one palette it would make sense but if you don't like pinky tones you definitely will like the first one better I don't know but if you're a neutral person like me I need to have both <laughs> so I think they're different enough there's a couple similar shades but you can see there's a slightly different undertone in all of the shades I don't know for me I'm probably not the best to judge because I'm such a neutral lover I appreciate every tone of neutrals particularly in the cool tones as you know so I'm like you need all of them <laughs> let me do one eye and I'll be back please pause take a moment and commend me because I managed to use every single shade of this palette on my eye it doesn't look like it but you can get this look without using 10 of the shades but as a makeup reviewer, I just gotta like stick a brush in every single one just to see. So I'm gonna start off with the cream bases. And the first one that I'm gonna go into is the lightest one. You can use your finger to apply this. I'm gonna use uh, Esam W21. I think this is a great way to get a controlled spread. A little goes a long way with these creams. And I know what you're thinking, like why do we need these creams, Morgan? What is the purpose? I will admit, for this particular palette, I don't think the creams are necessary because neutral shades normally kind of stand out on their own or whatever. But, you know, there are benefits to it. One being you can just do a cream eyeshadow look for something really simple and hydrating if you have drier eyelids. Two, it creates a base that's easier for the shimmers to stick to, which will also kind of make them brighter and more reflective. Three, it creates a nice even canvas all over the eyelid if you want it like this, which will help with longevity as well as eyeshadows from fading throughout the day. There are benefits to it. I'm going to take a refer number 12 brush. And I'm going to use the darker cream shade in the outer corner. Like I said, I think his powder formula is so good that for me, I don't find it necessary. I don't really reach for the cream shadows here. I just don't. They're nice to have and I think it really is a good, unique idea. They're quite easy to use. But... They're not necessary for this palette, but they're good. So, you know, so just like if you wanted to do a super simple, quick look, pop one of the shimmers on the eyelid and you'd be good to go. So there is, I think, a versatility in them really, especially for more everyday wearers. But if you're packing and blending them on like me, you probably don't need to do this, but I just wanted to show you what they look like. As you can see, they're quite pigmented, easy to manipulate and do what you want. They're a good formula. If you have oily eyelids though, I would be careful, but yeah. So let's get 
to the mattes now. Using a Wayne Goss number three, I'm starting off with the lightest matte shade. I'm just gonna go down the row pretty much. And I'm using this kind of underneath my brow bone, not exactly directly underneath because this is just a bit too deep, I think, to work as a highlight shade, but it is a nice haze shade. If you have a medium to deep complexion, it's just going to be great as a highlight under brow bone shade, but I think I still need a little bit of brightness right up here on my skin tone, but great that they have this. You can also use this to set the cream eyeshadow as well and then head out. That would be very pretty. I like this shade. Then I'm going to go directly down into the next shade and I'm going to put this in the inner corner of the crease. One thing I will say about these mattes, while they are quite close to one another, I do think each of them hold their own. The only shades that I think arguably might be a little too close are these two right here. But other than that, I mean, I think Patrick did a phenomenal job of giving each shade a purpose in this palette. Even though it is a more monochromatic palette, each shade still does a little something different to the eye. Refer 27, and then I'm going in with this one, the third one down, and this one. You see, it's so much deeper than that first one. So even though I said they're kind of close, again, they do have their own purpose. And this one, I'm just blending all the way out the rest of the crease. I'm also gonna use this shade all along the lower lash line. This is a refer number 27 brush, and this is going to be a smoky look. And I really blended and layered the mattes in this so that I could see how deep, how smoky we could get it. So this is the base. I mean, all of the mattes thus far are blending beautifully. So we're gonna start to get some depth up in here. So I'm gonna start off with this shade right here, which has a little bit more warm. I wouldn't necessarily have used this in this particular look but I just wanted to show you you can see what it brings to the table here it does add that hint of warmth here and it's quite easy to blend this was just to show you kind of what it would look like and then I'm going into the darkest shade and this shade very great quality it adds a lot a lot of depth even more depth than you would think i'm gonna run this along the entire lo lower lash line this is a wayne goss number 20 brush by the way and i just wanted to get this pretty smoky just to see one how it blends two how it builds and what kind of looks and capabilities do you have with this palette and this shade is just phenomenal i'm going to blend that out I think I got it even a little deeper on this eye. So this is our base. As you can see, it was super easy to get here. And like I said, you don't need to use every single shade like I did to get this kind of effect. You can use like three shades to get this. You don't need all five. Okay, let's get to the shimmers. I'm gonna start off with the reddish shade right here. I just had to know these work best with the fingers. That's how you're gonna get the highest point of reflection. And this is gonna go on, I don't know, not the whole outer half. I leave a little bit in the outer corner, but other than that, starting from the pupil back. And you can see, and sometimes it's hard to pick up on camera, but I feel like you can still even see how dimensional this is. The Patrick Ta formula is really so extra that you're even able to still see it on camera, which says a lot. And then I really wanted to use this shade because it's a pink and gold duochrome right here. So this one for me was like the star of the show. So I'm just gonna press that pretty much all over the lid. So hopefully you can see how much dimension we're getting. These are so beautiful for an evening out. I mean, I'm wearing these during the daytime, but they're not messy or anything. If you use a brush, they'll be a little bit more messy, but if you use your fingers to apply, you're not gonna get too much fallout. You can see I barely got any fallout with this look. I mean, I'm just waxing poetic about this palette, but I think it is beautiful. And I enjoyed the first Major Dimension palette. I wasn't as impressed with it at the time. I think it was just a little too warm for me. I thought it was really great, but the color story was boring for me. I like the roses. I, <laughs> I do. I hate to admit it. Okay, I'm gonna go into the broken shadow. I wish this was slightly lighter, like just a hint. It does work as a highlight for me, don't get me wrong, but I wish it was a little bit more champagne-y and with a slightly more satin finish. I think that would make it a little bit more versatile versatile, especially if it was even a little lighter because I think it would give another level of depth in this palette, but it still is beautiful. All over the eyelid, I can see it being stunning with a look though. I'm not knocking it. I'm just thinking out loud. And then lower lash line, all we have left are these two colors. So I'm using a refer number three brush. And again, this is kind of PC with using a brush 
So I would like to use this in my next look all over the eyelid to see the full intensity of the shade, but I decided it right here. Definitely needs to be used with a finger. I don't know if these two really were necessary to have together or even these two. These shimmers seem kind of close, especially when they translate onto the eyelid. So I'm gonna have to put this all over my eyelid in the next look to see that. So these might be a little close, which is why I think it would be nice to get as much as I love this formula, like if this was a little bit more satin and bright I think it would have made these guys stand out even more, you know, and then we're gonna go into this shade Which is a little bit more satiny. And I love that about this and I'm just gonna put in the lower lash line This is gonna be pretty for a smoky eye all over the eyelid or even on the outer half where I put this would be really beautiful So I think that if you want to get a kick butt smoky look put this all over the lid and then this right on top mm, mm -hmm. and then maybe one of the other lighter glimmery shades just to kind of sprinkle a little extra sparkle on top so this is a look obviously i did the look in a way that i could use as many shades as possible to tell you about the quality but i do think there's a lot of versatility within this palette for one just follow the guide that he already gave you you can for every day just use like two of the shades at a time you can get a smoky eye you can get a light pink eye for it being a rose toned monochromatic palette I think there's some variety here so let me finish the look and I'll be right back the completed look what do we think I think it is so stunning so overall if you can't tell I really do enjoy the palette do I think it's something that you need if you have a large collection most likely not I mean I don't think these colors are anything unique in particular I think the shimmers though they are a little something extra you know you don't quite have this formula everywhere in the market I think it's a really competitive glimmer formula so in that case I do think that this is worth it if you're really into glimmery shades. Here's the thing, if you like the color story, you think you're gonna use it and you want it and you're wondering if it's good, it is a beautiful, beautiful palette. It's honestly one of my new favorite rose palettes. I like it better than the original one, so I'm feeling it, I like it. I definitely recommend it, but of course I'm going to acknowledge that this is a pricey palette. If you're gonna get it, Get it now if you are a Sephora VIB member. I'm worried because when Patrick Ta sells out, like it sells out for months, it takes him a while to restock. There is a little bit of urgency there if you do want to purchase it. I'm even surprised that it hasn't sold out yet. I think probably by the time the next tier opens for the people that are waiting, it will probably sell out. I mean, hopefully he kept it stocked, but when something sells out from him, we're not gonna get it back for months. So there is a slight urgency if you are planning on purchasing it. But you guys I really like it the mattes blend beautifully I could do without the creams but they work great as well and the shimmers really are something special formulation wise so I hope you guys enjoyed this review and you found it helpful I am going to have fun playing with more looks to see exactly how much versatility we can get out of this palette you know with it being a monochromatic palette you're not going to be able to create all the looks in the world but from what I've seen what I've experienced today I think we can get a little bit a variety here all things considered with it being a mono palette but yeah I think Patrick Ta did a great job I think if you were looking for the thumbs up for me I am definitely giving you a thumbs up this is a good one and I'm excited about it and there hasn't been an eyeshadow palette that's launched recently that I felt so excited about so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful if you pick this palette up let me know your thoughts down below thank you guys so much for liking this video and being subscribed to my channel and I will catch you guys in the next one bye guys have a good one Thank <laughs> you.